Coming up this week on Winchester Deadly Passion, Melissa Bachman is hunting some familiar Illinois territory with Golden Triangle Whitetail in hopes of taking a mature buck with her shotgun or muzzleloader. Year after year, Illinois is the one state that consistently produces big whitetails for Melissa, and she's hoping history will repeat itself. All coming up next on Winchester Deadly Passion. Whitetails are one of the things that people across the country, well, everybody loves hunting them. And for me, I grew up hunting whitetails. And really, when I look back at things that I hope to accomplish when I got older, well, shooting a big buck, well, that was always on the list. Not that that's the biggest thing by any stretch, but it's something I always dreamed about. And it's something that really shows how your hard work can pay off. Because yes, anybody can go out and shoot a deer, but to really wait and be patient, it's a sense of accomplishment when it all comes together. But one of the things I learned, well, going to the right locations, that's a big part of the success. And for me, I've had probably the best luck in the entire United States all at one location. And that's in West Central Illinois at Golden Triangle Whitetails. I've had hunt after hunt and had just incredible luck. Now some years, it's not as easy as others. Sometimes you get down, you think things aren't gonna work out, but if you put your time in, usually something good comes out of it. So just be right on the middle. Oh God. Good deal. to gun hunting in Illinois, you have a couple options. You can either go with a slug or muzzleloader. But this year, well, I was headed out for the four-day slug season to start things off. Now, we were looking at some nasty weather rolling in. And as a hunter, I couldn't ask for anything better. Snowstorms on their way, and I was all smiles. Now, I knew I had a pretty comfortable gun box to climb into, and I also knew that that weather coming in Hopefully we get the deer up and moving, and once the snow hit, hopefully every deer in the area would be hitting the food pots. Now one of the things with having a big front come in, well usually the winds pick up, and that's exactly what was happening. When that wind picks up, the deer get extremely spooky. We had several big groups of deer out on the field, and then suddenly, for no reason, they'd be hightailing it out of there, and they were on their way out. It was really making it a little bit frustrating because there was no reason these big groups needed to be taking off and I was afraid every time they took off, well maybe a big buck was just on his way out. But that's just the way it goes. So as we were sitting there, well the field had finally cleared, the snow was starting to come in and you know what? It wasn't long from when those snowflakes started falling that we started seeing deer coming back out. At first, there were just a few does trickling back out onto the field. Then I looked up and spotted a pretty nice buck walking right on the edge. Now, he looked a little bit thin, not real heavy, but he had a really cool kicker on his left bean and looked like actually one of the bucks I had shot before, just a younger version. Well, I decided to let him walk, but the thing that was making me really happy, well, with this snow falling, this was midday and this buck was up and on his feet. Hopefully this would be a good sign for what was to come. Now finally we had a pretty big group of deer out on the field. The snow was coming down. Everything's good. Evening's coming close. Looks like we've got just the perfect field of decoys. And then suddenly something must have spooked one deer. They kind of started going through, going through. 
the entire field ended up spooking up for absolutely no apparent reason. But it didn't take long and actually a nice buck stepped out extremely close to our blind. Now it was already getting pretty dark and I couldn't quite tell how good he was. He looked like he was kind of one of those borderline bucks, not real thick, just a nice looking deer and it was pretty cool to watch. He just fed out in the field and I was hoping maybe he'd draw one of those big bucks out but that didn't end up happening. But either way, it was nice to see that we did lose the entire field to the deer spooking out. But even after that, another buck still came out and a few deer trickled on after that. But overall, it was a pretty amazing sit. Now, of course, a lot of people have heard of the big bucks in Illinois, and they are definitely here. In fact, over the years, well, I've had some amazing success, but a lot of that, it all has one thing in common. It's where I hunt and the amount of time I put in. And it's not just about the amount of time on stand. Sure, that's important, but something that's even more important is all that time you spend scouting before the season may even start. Now, one thing I really think is powerful is having a lot of cutty backs out. Now, I get a lot of videos, a lot of photos, and this can be extremely helpful because as soon as you go from having night photos, night videos, of a big buck to suddenly daytime photos, well, that's your time. He's finally gotten rid of his nocturnal habits and you might only have 24 or 48 hours, but because of your cameras being out, you can really zone in on that. The other thing is making sure that all your stands are set exactly where they need to be. Spend your time in the spring out scouting, marking stands, whatever needs to happen to make those setups the best they can be. The other thing, well, it doesn't matter what time of the year it is, food plots are key. The more food plots you have, the better your property is gonna be. Between food plots and having low pressure, well, you can get and grow those big bucks on your property and then let them flourish. You're not gonna be pushing them off and there's honestly no reason they would need to leave. Now, with all this in mind, well, I knew that I had a great setup, but instead of going back to that same field, I didn't have a lot of time left on the slug hunt, so I decided to try beans. I was at a cornfield before. This time, we were going for beans, and the weather was supposed to get bad once again. As I was sitting there watching the field, something caught my eye over to the side, and a nice buck was walking down the hill right to the field. Now I decided I needed to get ready just in case, but as he entered the field, well, I just couldn't decide if he's a shooter. He looked like he was pretty nice and thick, but his timeline just wasn't that great, and he didn't look like he had a body of a really old buck. So instead, I watched him, looked through my scope, and finally decided he's just a little bit too young. Plus, it was still early enough that I thought with all these storms coming in, I'm really gonna have some good luck. And one of the reasons that I felt comfortable waiting and passing on a buck like this, well, it's because of the things I've had in the past. I mean, just last year, I sat all the way through the entire slug season. And finally, on the last night, a beautiful buck stepped out. Now, all the other deer had left the field that night, and this buck stepped out on his own, just a beautiful, tall tine deer and I made a great shot within 100 yards and I found this buck and he was absolutely beautiful. A really nice buck and a buck showing that if you wait till the end, well, you might be rewarded. So instead of squeezing the trigger, I decided to wait and see how it went. Now, unfortunately, well, it ended up just deer coming and going and no big bucks. In fact, that was the end of the season and I realized, well, my slug tag was over. But the good news is, next weekend, I was gonna be able to come back to the same area just with my muzzleloader. And the best part is, well, there looked to be some giant snowstorms on the way. Tip of the Week is brought to you by Field & Stream. Trusted brands, timeless traditions. 
Once you purchase an ATV or UTV, of course you want to get as much use out of it as possible. Now one way that you can use it year round, well it's by putting different accessories on it. Now Moose Utility, they have a wide variety of accessories. Everything from things to do with food plots, to snow removal, winches, everything you could possibly need. Now the one easy way to do this is you simply go to their website, enter the make, model, and year of your ATV or UTV, and you can find everything that's made for yours. Now on mine, I've gotten all sorts of nice accessories to make it more manageable in the field. I also put on different wheels and tires, makes it look a little bit better, and it's going to make it easier in the mud, the snow, and the sand. And when you're out in the middle of nowhere, well you want every advantage possible. So if you check them out, you might find some great accessories that can change your ATV or UTV into a year-round machine. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Cuddyback Digital, Hard Hitting Easton Arrows, Hunter Safety System, Winchester Repeating Arms, Swarovski Optic, Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Rage Broadheads, leading the evolution in lethal technology. And Golden Triangle Whitetail, your hunt of a lifetime awaits. Well, it's opening morning of muzzleloader season, and I was hoping to get my deer with a slug, but no such luck. The good thing is, well, the weather is supposed to get extremely cold. We're expecting to have a big snowstorm, so I'm hoping that's going to get the deer moving, especially considering I've got a huge bean field and a huge cornfield to sit on. So what better place to be in a snowstorm? So I'm going to get out there and see what Illinois has to offer this year. great weather and it's already starting to snow. They're forecasting for the flurries to just keep coming and I'm hoping that's going to be perfect and get these deer out moving. Now where I'm sitting it's basically like a four or five acre bean field in the middle of a big woods area kind of down low. Now this is a great area. We've seen some really nice bucks on the trail cameras. That's one of the reasons I ended up leaving my other field that I usually hunt and I'm sitting here. The other thing is when it gets this cold a lot of these deer are out looking for those really good nutrients and the beans can offer it. Plus this is an absolutely huge field and there's not a lot of food sources around so I'm just gonna sit in here sit tight it's already starting to snow and I hope the weather gets these big boys moving. Now in my experience, when the temps drop and the weather gets cold, a lot of these deer like going to beans. It's a great protein form and it'll keep them warm and keep them fat. That's what they need at this point in the season. So we decided to sit in a gun box over this huge bean field. Now the weather, well, the weathermen for once, they were right. It started really coming down, the snow was coming through, and the coolest part is, the deer were up and moving. It was still early and we literally had deer coming in on every end of this bean field. The deer were covered in snow, but the one thing they wanted were beans. And I was sitting right in the middle of them all. I couldn't have asked for any better weather, but unfortunately, it didn't cause the big buck in the area to get up on his feet and come to the beans, at least while I was there. It was a great experience seeing all those deer, and it was really exciting. And the nicest part is, I was in a pretty nice gun box staying out of the snow, but it just wasn't happening in this situation. I knew the deer were there. I was in what I would consider the perfect place with the perfect weather, and the big buck just didn't show. Your Rundown is brought to you by Peak Antifreeze. Right with your car and wallet. Peak. Run. True. 
Now I'm out here on a muzzleloader hunt, but one of the things that I have this year that's a little different than before, well on my muzzleloader I actually have an HHA sight. Now usually I use an HHA sight on my bow, and this season I even put one on my crossbow. But now they've actually made it for your scopes too. So what you can do is I've got it set up so you sight it in and now you can dial it in for the exact distance. So you don't have to worry about having a ton of different reticles, you simply look right in the crosshairs and you can make your shot. Now muzzle loaders, they're extremely effective for some long range shooting, but you wanna make sure you have your drop all accounted for, and with this, it's no problem. Now this big field I'm sitting on with a muzzle loader, I'm pretty sure I could shoot any area of this field. Well, that is, if I don't get buck fever and start shaking too much, but I'll have my shooting sticks in here, and hopefully anything that steps out, if it's big enough, we can take the shot. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester, the American legend. Matthews, catch us if you can. Field and Stream, where traditions begin. ScoutLookWeather.com, download the free Deer Log app for your smartphone. Moose Utility Division, demand the brand. Bog Pod, versatility defined. M&P by Smith & Wesson. And Peak Antifreeze. Right with your car and wallet. Peak, run, true. Closed captioning is brought to you by the 4-in-1 Woodsman from Zippo Outdoor. In my opinion, there's no magical time of the year that's the exact time you need to be hunting whitetails. Of course, the rut, it's an incredible time. But over the years, I've had the privilege to hunt at different times during the year, whether I'm bow hunting, slug hunting, or even muzzleloader hunting, and I've found that each season has its own unique attributes. Now, one hunt that I've done, opening day. Now I've had two years where I had incredible success on opening day. Well, I went, sat on stand, had the perfect opportunity, a broadside shot, and what did I do? Totally messed it up. I missed the shot by a mile, and that deer bounded off, he almost came back. But it was one of those things that it really opened my eyes. This was one of the first big deer I had ever seen. I had hunted in Minnesota, and I had shot a couple of nice deer, but I had never seen a buck like this. Part of it, well, I think my string hit my safety vest, but I think a big part of it was probably buck fever as well. But fast forward, it all worked out for a reason. I hunted all season. I put in the time and finally, late season, after almost 46, 47 days hunting, I shot a 202 inch buck. Now this, this was a little luck and a little bit of my opportunity. Now, the luck came from a pack of coyotes chasing it right to me. The opportunity, it was an awful day. It was nasty weather and I went out hunting. I really didn't feel like it. I didn't think things were gonna work out and I put in the time and it all worked out. And you can't get ahead if you're back at camp and you don't go out. Half of it is just being there. Sometimes a little luck never hurts and I will take luck any day, especially when it comes to a 202 inch deer. Now, of course, not every person's gonna get a crack at a 200 inch deer. In fact, I may never get a chance like that again. But the one thing that you can learn from this is the fact that when you hunt late season, it can be some of the best hunting out there. And a lot of people think that, well, it's after the rut, all the big bucks have been shot. And yes, of course, some of the deer have been shot, but you've got those bigger bucks that are run down from the rut. They've lost nearly 20% of their body weight and they are looking for food. The weather turns cold and if they don't eat, they won't survive. And that's when you really can get a crack at those big deer.
I just had a beautiful buck just come in. It's the last day of my hunt. He came in right in the standing corn in front of us. I can see he went right down there. It has just been awesome. I have put in a lot of time. Two seasons worth of hunting, all the slug season, now muzzleloader season. I got it done on the last night. Well, as hard as it's been to sit still with my blind, I've waited till the field is completely empty and it's pitch black out. So, my deer is right over here. Didn't hardly even make it to the edge. And look at this buck. This has been just awesome. This is exactly what I saw. Some cool character to him. All the patience paid off. Sitting on a food source late season, and it turned out to be a pretty amazing hunt. Really got an eyeful. In fact, I was here during an incredible snowstorm, sat it out, and it worked out. Just a beautiful buck. We're out here at Golden Triangle Whitetails, and you know what? When it comes to Illinois, well, this place has the big bucks. Year after year, I've had success. Sometimes it takes a little bit, but on bucks like this, it is absolutely worth the wait. Coming up next week on Winchester Deadly Passion, Inyala, Waterbuck, and Oryx are just a few of the species on the menu as Melissa heads to South Africa for an incredible plains game hunt near the mighty Limpopo River at the Maroi Conservancy. Surrounded by Gemsbach, Eland, Waterbuck, and Wildebeest, Melissa and Julius try everything from ground blinds to spot and stock, all coming up next week.